Hello and welcome back to the fish locker out on the shore at night. We do have quite nice conditions tonight. We've just had three weeks worth of not very nice conditions. The plus side of that being though is sometimes when you get weather in a certain direction for a period of time and that coincides with big tides, you sometimes get scallops. The scallops live off in deeper water and the tide and the weather sometimes picks them up and brings them closer to shore. When that coincides with a really big spring tide, you can sometimes find them along the lower tide line. So that's what we're going to do now. I've got my foraging bucket, we've got about another hour of the ebb, which means the tide's going to be going out for another hour. And we're just going to follow it down, see what we can find. Let's go. Just walking along here, you can see probably five or six different types of shellfish. Now just looking about what's dead on the higher tide line will show you what those good things are finding out there like there is a decent sized mussel they're good eating there is a very small razor clam they're also good eating cockles they're good eating and there was that is a young king cockle or spiny cockle yeah so just having a scout about round here up on the higher tide line that will show you what you can find out there this here is what we're looking for you see just hiding the sand there now I was just walking along and I just saw it do like a clap and it created like a jet of sand there look you see it that's what we're after Nope, there's another one there. See that? Yeah, just walking along and I just saw like a little puff of sand. There is another. Now they are incredibly well camouflaged when they've got their head down. But if you can just to say, see the outline there. See? Oh. There is a little dragonette. What I like to look for is quite often you'll find that you'll get a lump of seaweed will attach to the top of them and when the a piece of seaweed will attach to the top of them and when the current comes it picks up the seaweed so drags them in so every single time I see a big patch of seaweed I'll have a look underneath it They look like this. This is an example. See how the seaweeds carried that shell in? It's acted like a sail. Well, that's what happens with the scallops. This is another telltale sign to look for. Is can you see the difference in colour of sand? Now something's turned that out. It's probably been a fish has been digging in there. That's another sign to look for. You see him? Got no claws. Poor fella. I don't know if he's been fighting with something. Yeah, it's a decent sized spider crab, but it's just got no claws. Yeah, we've got 
another one here, look. A smaller one. Look at that. Tell you what. Nearly yeah, got me then. Oh, that was deep. That one's an old one, that one. That one's massive. They're not usually that easy to find. <laughs> that one for whatever reason. Yeah. That one for whatever reason was turned over. Got a little slipper limpet on its back. We're doing all right so far. Yeah, as you can tell, I've gone way past my wellies. There is a conger eel. See? Oh, it's <laughs> tell you what, they're aggressive. Same again, just saw a little puff of sand. Just there. This is an interesting one. Now I thought that this was dead until I kicked it over because look it's absolutely covered, it's got a sponge on it, it's got slipper limpets on it, but that is a full scallop, look. <laughs> I've just come into the shallows to empty my wellies off and just look how many prawns there are. See him? That's all fast for my hands. But yeah. There's prawns everywhere. <laughs> Bit futile trying to catch them with my hands. Well, there's a shore crab. I have honestly never seen so many prawns. Yeah, these, these prawns are fast. You see them all? Oh, there's a velvet swing crab. You see the bass? Oh, there it goes. <laughs> oh look, here's another one. Little schooly bass hiding in the seaweed. <laughs> I bet they're in here looking for the prawns. Right, we're bang on low tide now. You can just see that little bit of a shelf there where it runs off to low tide. So this is the low tide line. And all I'm doing is I'm just walking along it. Because on this little ledge here, like I said about bits of seaweed like this ends up getting washed in. Now seaweed sometimes grows on top of them like this look. And it can act as a bit of a sail and it drags them in. So I'm just walking along looking. That's a lovely little one. That's way too small though. The size that we're wanting, I guess, no smaller than that. So we'll.
just like that. <laughs> that one has even got a dogfish egg in it. You see what I mean about a hitchhiker on its back? That piece of seaweed has caused that scallop to get dragged all the way in. The lovely little common starfish. See how the tide's starting to turn, it's bringing a lot of more weed in with it. Well that there is absolutely incredible. Is he gonna... I have 15 size scallops. These two, once I've checked them, these are too small so I'm gonna go and take these back. But yeah, we've got some absolute brutes, haven't we? That one there has made me laugh, because it's got like an entire bush attached to it. That's been his downfall, that. So yeah, that is, a, that is a fantastic haul. Found some other bits and pieces as well. I mean, there was some, some bass, some sized bass that I could have kept. There was, there was a conger eel, there was a few cuttlefish. It's been a great night. Now, it, it is stupid o'clock, so I'm gonna get these in a bucket of fresh water, and then we're gonna go and see Jim at Spargo's Kitchen. Right, it is a more suitable hour of the day. We are in Spargo's Kitchen, and I have the, God, that is a, that is a lovely sized scallop, that one. We have the scallops that I foraged up last night on the shore. We also have dessert in the making. An incredible pavlova to look forward to for dessert. And I will just pass you over to Jim and he'll tell you what we're going to do with the scallops. Hello and welcome to the Spargo's kitchen. Um, John has brought these fabulous scallops over which we'll get around to cleaning and preparing in a moment. Uh, uh, prior to his arrival I started uh, preparing some sauces so we're going to try uh, French, Spanish, Indian. I really need to get on with this Indian one. I've got some very finely chopped red onion, garlic, ginger and the green chilli and I'm just going to put in some coconut milk. Gently Stir that in. What I will do, because we have got three recipes on the go at the same time, I will get Jim to write down the ingredients for the three different recipes and I will put it in the description of the video for people. Uh, lovely. So, just leave that on a low light to simmer away. In this pan I've got some, again, finely chopped red onion. I'm using red onion because that's what we have pl plenty of. Uh, and some from the allotment is it? from the allotment and some chopped smoked bacon and again a little garlic in I shall cook the reheat this and cook the three or four of those scallops in there and then we'll lift the cooked scallops out add a little white wine some vegetable stock and perhaps try and make a butter sauce for the and in this pan I again red onion uh, chopped which I sweated down for a long time and then some of our softer tomatoes from the allotment water, tomato puree, thyme and garlic but that's been simmering away for about an hour and I'm going to pass that through a sieve because we want the tomato sauce but not the, necessarily the flesh and the seeds. I'm going to use a bit of a Spanish influence on this one. The scallop is the emblem of Santiago, St James of Compostela. So we will try and serve this cooked scallops on this tomato sauce and I'm going to top it with some 
fried potatoes, a little bit of butter and some chopped herbs. These are just some uh, potatoes that I no, no, specific, no specific type of potato. No, just what left over from the allotment. There, we've got all the skins mm. and the seeds. It, does, it smells amazing, that. Jim and I were just discussing the, the tomato sauce that he's worked up with the um, with the right tomatoes. We've um, we've covered it in other videos before, but we do try and use an awful lot of the ingredients in our cooking from Jim's allotment. I do have a video on our other channel. I'll tag it in the description of here. But we're just discussing there that that is that is the key thing to do with your glut of tomatoes because generally you will get a harvest, you'll get a lot at the same time. You can make them into a sauce like that and then freeze it down into portions. You can use it all the way through the winter. Well done, John. Uh, yes, that's the past tomato. I just needed a little sweetening up. So that's uh, ready to go. There's our um, Indian style sauce with coconut milk uh, reducing. So that too is finished. Spoons. People do ask sometimes when I've said that we're a smidge and a tad and just a pinch. And they're like, well, what's that? So, Same anyway, way. a smidgen is the smallest and a tad is, you know, that much. So, that's it is a, a, a recognized measurement, smidges and tads. Right, John, it's going to turn everything off and let's clean the. I'll start shucking these off then. <laughs> we mm -hmm. should have possibly done this earlier with the easier ones because it's the more difficult ones that get left to the end. This is what it looks like inside. So that disc of muscle, all you do is you put your shucking knife into the side like that. Then slide down like that. Take the top off. There is the muscle. There is the row or the coral and this is the frill. That dark part there is its stomach contents. Now you should be able to pick hold of it and then pull and it should all come off and leave the white disc underneath but they're being really stubborn today. And it should look like that. Some of the larger scallops I'm just going to cut in half. It will much reduce the cooking time and that's the onion and bacon and a bit of garlic and I'm gonna you're looking for a change in colour in it just stay that opaqueness when that has gone that's why I would say we're there the heat right back. There we are, a little bit of colour. It's gone opaque. So we'll take those out and they will continue cooking on their own. Taken the scallops, which I've just partially cooked, I've put into that pan about two tablespoons of vegetable water. I blanched off some finely sliced carrot, onion, and some runner beans, and a little bit of spring green and water from that I've just put a couple of ounces clean the bottom of the pan we've also got the scallops draining off and you've kept aside some of the shells yes uh, this is uh, a little bit of chardonnay the remnants of last half, night half a glass yes and into that I'm going to put some lime juice. Let that reduce down by about a third. And then I'm going to... There's about four ounces of butter which I cut into small dice. And it's... I've just had it in the freezer for half an hour. It's very, very cold. And then when this liquid is reduced, we'll start whisking that in. To form our sauce. The wine and the vegetable stock are reducing down. But I've just put in half a dozen 
basil leaf. Uh, uh, shred it up and then going to start whisking in the cold butter. Why, if you're going to melt it in, do you make it cold to start with? Uh, this is a process known as Montean. Uh, the cold butter will emulsify and if it all behaves itself, we'll end up with a sauce instead of a pan of melted butter. Yeah. Is that why they really have to be constantly whisking? Yes. And that's the last of the butter. Thing. I do see whisking. what you mean. So instead of it being just like a pan of melted, melted butter, butter. Like that is yeah. a pan of melted butter. We actually have a... And that's called Montean. Mo Montean. When uh, finished whisking the last of that butter in, these um, vegetables, as, as I say, carrot, raw beans, a little bit of spring green, and some red onion. I only have red onions. <laughs> what a glut of them, you <laughs> So, so um, I just blanched those for a couple of minutes in a little water, saved the water uh, to make the um, basis of this butter sauce. I'm going to put some basil in there, squeeze of lime juice. There's the vegetables. We'll let those take up a little bit of heat for a minute or two. I think that whisk's seen better days, hasn't it? Uh, well, it's, yes, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, served it's, me it's some whisking. It's like my body, it's <laughs> served me well for years, but it's all now starting to slightly <laughs> show signs of seeing be better days. So, let's... That's a lovely mix of colour in there now. It is, isn't it? Let's... We're going to be bold on this one, John. I haven't... Season. Let's turn those over. That's it. We have our sauce. Mm. Certainly, uh, no salt. Quite a bit of salt come out of the out of the bacon. So take that off the heat. You can probably see that slightly better in the yeah. light there, but it would look lovely. Diced potato that I uh, fried off earlier. I'm just putting into a fry pan and I'm just adding some mixed garden herbs. I've got a griddle pan there, which as you can see is just... And this is just a so knob of melted butter. This is a knob of melted butter. If you pass the scallops through the melted butter, they behave much better in the pan, you get less spitting. I'm not going to do t too many at once. Salted or unsalted? Or does it not matter? Uh, uh, un unsalted would be better. So, just going to pop these, start with the biggest ones first. Just cut that big one in half, but they've had <laughs> cooked beautifully. Nice bit of colour on both sides. Kill the pan. And in this bowl I've got some of the hot tomato sauce for some chopped parsley. And there's a little bit of parsley juice. They do look amazing when I'm sealed. Let's give those a coat. It's sometimes attractive to fish in the two shells. It's quite old school.
Flood it. Oh, you could always put a little bit of vegetable in there. Yeah. It smells incredible. And then here we've got our diced potato. You could, if you just want potato, you could use herby breadcrumbs. And again, just pick up the rosemary in the potato. I mean, we could, if you wish to dot that with a bit of cheese, you could go with manchego cheese if you wanted. I'm not going to, I'm just going to eat, we'll eat those as they are. A bit of parmesan or some chore no. cheddar. No. Yes, John. <laughs> no. Yes, John. This is our butter sauce scrolls and the vegetables. You and I are gonna just have one dish. I'm sure I've two spoons. How romantic. So just to recap. This is the French inspired French one. Inspired one. Smoked bacon, red onion, garlic, with garlic, with your vegetable greens parboiled. Yes. Kept the water, and then you add uh, about four ounces of butter with the Monte whisking sauce. Yes, that's correct. Let the wine and the water reduce yeah. to about a third, and then whisk in the the chilled butter. And this was you said this was a Spanish this is like inspired one. Spanish. Uh, one with the tomato sauce. Uh, you could use herby breadcrumbs, but we've done this with um, diced potato, pan fried in a little olive oil. And just the ripest butter. of your tomatoes. Push you through. Just reduced down with uh, well sweated down onion and some garlic. They do look lovely in them little shells like that. Yeah, they quite attractive. Actually, with some cheese sprinkled on the top and then just toasted for a second. Uh, right, just searing off the last of the scallops. And here's our little Indian inspired sauce of onion, ginger, green chilli, coconut milk. So we pour that in there. And then our scallops will just pop. Toasty. The coral does add a nice little flash of colour, but we were just discussing there, there's not an awful lot of texture in them, and they cook literally in seconds. Yeah. There we are. We have scallops cooked three different delicious ways. <coughs> These are absolutely incredible. And tomato sauce. Mm so mm -hmm. second and third round it's yeah it's going well they are um, oh, it's absolutely <laughs> they are very very good every it's, single one of them yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah wonderful and they all in a bizarre way they all complement each mm. other i suppose we really should have started with that one i would have done that one last oh, really just because the tomato one i found um set it off really well this one is nice but that was a little bit stronger than the other ones. Mm. So. This is the taste that I want to hang on to. Keep drinking, uh, yeah. But butter sauce is delicious, and and you're just left with that zing of lime, so it's not at all uh, cloy. Well, absolutely stuffed. Pretty much licked the plates clean. Just mopping up the last of that with some crusty bread. That's a nan bread, but a flat bread would have been perfect. Yeah. Every single one of those was absolutely delicious. I think we've just got enough space for a little bit of that pavel over. Um, I hope you enjoyed joining me on the show. What a fantastic night's energy. And an amazing cook up from Jim. Uh, three different delicious ways of eating scallops. I hope you enjoyed joining us. All the very best. See you later. Bye.